everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am here to talk about how to get into classics. This was a video that was particularly prompted by one of my friends who was asking for some suggestions of places to start with getting into classics and I thought that I would do a little two-part mini-series. Oh, look how fancy we are. This first part is going to be all about just general tips and advice for how to kind of take the intimidation factor away from starting to read classics for the first time and then the second video is going to be more general book recommendations. Now of course I'm not saying this as a teacher or any sort of expert in classic literature. I don't have an English degree or consider myself to have read a vast number of classics but I am speaking from the perspective of somebody who was once really intimidated by the idea of reading classics and I'm not anymore, James Joyce notwithstanding. And I don't think that other people should be either and I think when you do finally crack into a classic and really enjoy it you can get so much valuable insight into a time period and it can just be really good fun, you know, fun, the thing that reading is meant to be. You can have that with classics as well. First and foremost, I do think it is important to understand that it is okay that if you find you cannot immediately dive into a classic piece of literature. It's really not worth it to try and pretend like there aren't some things that are immediate barriers to starting to read classics. You know, antiquated language and expressions, uh, contemporary behaviours and societal norms and morals that just do not have any value today and with our personal modern sensibilities. However, it is also worth remembering that, you know, these big classic pieces of literature, you know, these grand epics, were once considered the contemporaries of their day. It sounds so, so obvious to say it out loud, but I think we often forget that. And it kind of takes some of the mystique out of it if you think, hey, Jane Austen, Lev Tolstoy, they were once the Sally Rooney's of their day. And many of these so-called classic authors were never writing with the intention that their work was going to be the greatest novel ever written. Some of them were, of course, uh, but most of them were just trying to write so that they could make their paycheck, so that they could have food and pay rent at the end of the day. Most of them were writing with a popular audience in mind and they would be absolutely horrified to find out that nowadays they are considered to be boring or dull or just hard to understand because that was never their intention. But yeah, it's true, the readers back in the day of these texts had a lot more contextual knowledge and understanding that we as modern readers do not have. They understand the societal norms, we, they understand the language, the slang that we just do not have readily available today. It's kind of like if somebody from the 1800s were to time travel and pick up a modern contemporary piece of literature from today, they would open it and they would be completely aghast. They would be so confused about what's going on. Same with us trying to pick up a classic piece of literature without having any context. But does that mean that that 19th century reader reading a modern piece of literature is any less of a person or less of a reader or less intelligent? No and you're not either. So yeah, that would be my first piece of advice with approaching uh, classics, is to try and understand some of the context of when they are being written. Considering the context of how and when these authors were writing their texts can make them seem so much more understandable and relatable, you know, rather than these gods of literature that we put up on a pedestal. For example, understanding that Charles Dickens published a lot of his stories into periodicals and submitted them chapter by chapter, serially, goes a long way into understanding why his works are so goddamn long. Like, oh yeah, he was being paid by the word, so of course he's gonna milk that story for all it's worth. Suddenly you look at Bleak House or David Copperfield and you don't see this big god of literature that you can't understand, you see a man who is just trying to squeeze as much money out of his creation as he can, and it's quite funny. And that suddenly makes Charles Dickens seem a lot more relatable and approachable, because we've all tried to squeeze as many words out of a story or an essay as we possibly can. And it's really not intensive research that you have to do to try and get some of this initial context. You do not need to have an English degree or a history degree to understand the context of these time periods. For example, watching a short YouTube video, listening to a podcast, reading a short article or a blog post to understand that time period a little bit more. And that will open up so much for you when you're starting to read these books. A lot of classic texts come with introductions at the beginning where an author will just go into the major themes and the plot for you and you might find that really helpful and you know there's always spark notes. I feel like people have a 
really bad relationship with websites like Sparknotes, they think it's cheating, but no, it is there to help you. Another piece of advice that I really, really stand by, and anybody who knows me knows that I love recommending, is to listen to audiobooks to try and get into classics. I'm such a massive advocate for audiobooks because I think they are just a foolproof way of being able to immediately immerse yourself into the tone and the humour of a piece of classic fiction. Sometimes when you're reading it physically on the page, you can't always quite get the tone or the humour, but an audiobook will really bring that to life for you. And you don't even have to listen to an audiobook all the way through. You know, there are some classics that absolutely I love listening to the audiobook of, and others where it helps you get into it, but then you can quite happily pick up the book and read it physically from then on. For example, I really love listening to the Brontes on audiobook, but I actually found listening to Frankenstein was actually a hindrance to my enjoyment, and I much, much preferred physically reading it. Another piece of advice that might really help you in the initial startup to looking into classics is to consider whether or not a piece of work has been translated and which translation you might be more tempted to use. This counts for foreign language classics but also for slightly older English classics because different translators will get the story across in different ways and you might find that you absolutely hate a book when you read it through one translation but then another one is so much more accessible and so much better to read. You can either go to the library or you can check out Google Books or an Amazon preview. Just have a little read of a couple pages and if a translation is really not calling to you and you're not responding to it, move on, go to something else. You will hopefully eventually find something that really gels with you. Now you might be thinking, Charlotte, it's all well and good telling me to look into different audiobooks or looking up the context, but like what classic do I even begin with? I don't know what to start with. There are just so many and that's fair enough. So for advice on which classic to read, um, I have a couple of suggestions. Firstly, I would say maybe think about the kind of genre of fiction that you currently like to read and then try and find a classic in that genre. For example, if you are a big fan of sci-fi, you might find that you really respond to Frankenstein by Mary Shelley or The Time Machine by H.G. Wells as they are like staple classics in sci-fi. Maybe you've come across a retelling of a classic that you've been really, really interested in. For example, Circe by Madeline Miller or The Song of Achilles, in which case you might consider having a look into Homer or to other ancient Greek authors. Have a think about some of your favourite films and TV shows. Chances are at least one or two of those will be based on a classic piece of literature. And some of them you may never have considered might have been based on a classic. For example, yeah, Clueless. It's based on Emma by Jane Austen. Bridget Jones? based on Pride and Prejudice. Pretty Woman is based on Pygmalion. 10 Things I Hate About You is based on Taming of the Shrew. Uh, Material Girls with Hilary Duff and Hayley Duff. That is based on Sense and Sensibility. Are you getting a sense of my taste in films? It's all like girly rom-coms, I love it. The Lion King is based on Hamlet. She's the Man is based on Twelfth Night. Get Over It is based on A Midsummer Night's Dream. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. I have great movie taste. Maybe you've discovered an author that you're interested in, but you're not quite sure how to tackle them. What book is the right one to go for first? Uh, you might find going for one of their shorter pieces of work, like uh, A Christmas Carol might be a good way of getting into Charles Dickens. Maybe have a look into some shorter editions. So for example, at Penguin have these little black classics. I have one of Oscar Wilde and then this general one of Suffragettes, but they have a whole series of like little mini, uh, selections of different authors' works. They give you a little taster of an author, get to see whether or not you like their writing style, but are much less intimidating than picking up War and Peace. Alternatively, you might find it easier to just go simple and go chronologically with an author. Just build up over time with them and see how they developed as a writer. Maybe you are very much a genre kind of person or you like hearing a particular type of story, in which case anthologies might be a really good place to start so that you can get a taste of lots of different authors across one particular concept. For me, I have lots of Christmas books which have so many different authors um, compiled all around the topic of Christmas. I have Around the Christmas Fire, I have a literary Christmas and I've got this favourite book of Christmas. This isn't just classic authors, uh, it's classic and contemporary. You might find you touch upon a particular author's short story that you really really resonate with and hey now you've got a new author that you can check the backlist off. One of the last things that I'd recommend is to potentially participate in read-alongs and book clubs that are all to do with classics. It's always really really fun when you can read a classic and get the opportunity to chat about it with other people who are like-minded. Have a look at different booktubers who you know are really really into classics. Off the top of my head I can think of Lucy the Reader, uh, Katie from Books and Things, Claire Fenby, they all 
talk very extensively about classics and might be a really great place to start. I know Claire Femby is doing a read-along in July of Middlemarch by George Eliot and that might be really fun to get involved with and Lucy is doing like a year-long classics community where people are talking about their favourite classics and the classics that they're reading through the year through the hashtag classics community and that might help to really boost your motivation when you're seeing other people are getting involved in classics alongside you. Hi guys, Charlotte from the future. Um, just wanted to say I completely forgot to talk about watching movies and TV shows that are adapted from classic literature. I'm such a massive advocate for watching films and TV shows that are based on classics. I think there's a bit of a taboo about watching like the film or the TV adaptation before you read the book, but I think if that helps you get into it, as I said before, I'm a massive fan of anything to kind of uh, help you with the visualization of a world. There's a reason that lots of English literature teachers like to show a bit of a film and then read a chapter and then show a bit more of a film and then read a chapter because they know that it helps students to visualize the world that they are getting into. So I'm a big fan and I'll probably either link below or put images of some of my favorite uh, book adaptations from film and TV. Lastly, and I think most importantly, just have fun with it. That's important to remember. They can be really educational, but they are meant to be fun. Reading is meant to be fun. And it's really important to not forget that and don't get bogged down trying to read something if it's just not entertaining. If you pick up a classic and you find that it's really not resonating with you and you don't like it, that's fine, move on to something else. It doesn't mean that you are a bad reader or that you just didn't get it because you didn't like a classic piece of literature that everybody else seems to like. You're entitled to your taste and to your preferences. Once again, I want to reiterate that reading is meant to be fun, so don't make it not fun for yourself. And classics are jam-packed with unique and clever humour, wonderful love stories, uh, deep meanings, captivating settings, uh, tragic plots and endings and unforgettable characters, and you can find that in classics just as you can with contemporary. I hope that this video maybe potentially helped um, and that it gave you a bit of advice if you were struggling at all with getting into classics. Like I say, there's going to be another video where I talk specifically about different book recommendations I think you might enjoy if you're just getting into classics. Do you have any advice yourself for places to start? Do let me know uh, and if you've got any other questions uh, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks! Bye!